in the history of our country, we've only elected two presidents who were Catholic. The first was John F. Kennedy, and the second was Joe Biden. When John F. Kennedy was running, there were some people who were concerned that he would have more loyalty to the Pope than he would to the Constitution or the people that he was called to serve. So there's a lot of controversy around that, notwithstanding the fact that most Catholics understood this was a false dichotomy, rooted in a profound misunderstanding of how conscience and faith interacts with one's political reasoning, and notwithstanding the fact that everyone who approaches politics, agnostic and, and atheist alike, come to politics with a religious worldview, it was actually a good question about John F. Kennedy. Which identity had priority? Was he just simply an American who happened to be Catholic? Or was he a Catholic who happened to be an American? Is it the same question applies to us. Which identity has priority? Today's second reading, St. Paul says that our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The context here is that Paul, as he's writing to the Philippians, are contra is contrasting the way that Christians live in the world versus those who do not believe. He's talking about those who act as enemies of Christ, who are preoccupied with this world. And he starts talking about how our citizenship is in heaven, intentionally referencing this idea of Roman citizenship, which conferred all sorts of dignity with it. it the Roman citizenship, many of the people in Philippi were Roman citizens, conferred a sense of identity a sense of allegiance, a sense of, of security. And Paul is contrasting this very clearly. He says, essentially, this is what he's saying. Because of what Jesus has done for you, you're part of a kingdom that transcends the kingdom of this world. That Jesus, not Caesar, is your Lord. Jesus, not Caesar, is coming to save you. And he's calling the Christians to remember of where they're headed and who they are. And it's very important for us to remember that because we who are citizens of heaven need to remember that we have dual citizenship, right? That we belong to a, a kingdom, an order that transcends the order of this world. And we need to remember that because of that, we are on our way home. We are on our way to our homeland and we operate according to a different allegiance. This is so critically important for us to remember that I want to just simply offer three implications that living as citizens of heaven can have in our lives right now. Number one, if we are citizens of heaven, then our allegiance to Jesus takes precedence over that of any ruler. And I'm not just talking about how uh, we don't have to obey laws that are unjust. And we know that by our faith that if any political ruler were to enact a law that contradicted reason or contradicted divine revelation, we would not have to follow that law. Or as the old adage goes, an unjust law is no law at all. I'm not just simply talking about that. I'm talking primarily about influence. Because that's what allegiance really is. It's about influence. Practically speaking then, who has greater influence on how you live your life? Jesus, the king of our heavenly homeland, who sits on the throne at the right hand of God, or the men and women who, sits, who sit in offices in Washington, D.C. and in Lansing? Now, some of you might be saying, well, of course, the, the nature of these kingdoms differ. Right, so the influence is going to be different, right? The, the kingdom of this world belongs to the temporal matters of politics and the polis, right? and that heaven belongs to heaven. And that, that's an entirely different reality, Father. And I 100% agree. But we need to also ask ourselves and be honest as to whether or not we've forgotten where we really belong and whose orders do we follow and whether or not we remember that if we're going to heaven, Jesus primarily needs to take precedence in our own heart as to whom we allow to influence us on how to see the world and how to live. You see, the truth is, is that this world is passing away and there's no political ruler that can do anything about that. This world is going to be destroyed and politics can do nothing about that, but Jesus can. The truth is, is that the, what's wrong with the world is the human heart, that sin is in the human heart 
And there's no public policy, there's no foreign policy that can save us from that. But our king in heaven can, and he has. One indication that we're living as citizens of heaven is that we're sincerely allowing ourselves to be influenced by Jesus more than we are those who sit in public office. Number two, the second impl implication that living as citizens of heaven right now can influence us or can, can change the way that we live right now is that living as a citizen of heaven helps us to stay focused, to make good, good decisions in life. We live in a world in which much of the world around us lives as if this is the only life that there is, that this is it. And if this is it, then the purpose of life is to try to get as much as we can, to pursue our own ends, to, to have as much influence in this world as we can, to get as much many goods and possessions and, and maybe enough pleasure. And so it becomes all about searching for ourselves, trying to create a meaning that ultimately is going to be destroyed in death. And because of that, it can be very difficult to make decisions in such a framework. If this life is all that there is, then no one really is going anywhere. And if you don't know where you're going, it's not very likely that you're going to get there. There are a lot of people who are lost today because they don't know who they are or where they're going. And we as Christians need to remember that we're on our way to heaven. That if we remember that we have a God who's personally loved us, that we have a Father in heaven who's preparing a place for us, that we're on our way home, and that our task is to bring the reality of heaven to earth. Right? We pray this every time we pray the Our Father, thy kingdom come, on, thy will be done on earth as it is to heaven, as it is in heaven. Then we know how to make good decisions in life. We know where we're going with the end in mind. It changes everything. And then we come to recognize that if we are remembering that we're citizens of heaven, that the point of life is not power. It's not about gaining power in this world so that we can get what we want. The point of life is love. Love is the reason why we exist and love is the reason why we are called to mission and to love in this short life so that we can prepare ourselves to be with God forever in the kingdom that does not end. Third point is that living as a citizen of heaven means living in security and joy, knowing that heaven is a gift that does not need to be earned. I think one of the, the most unnecessary causes of anxiety that I sometimes find in Catholics and Christians alike is that we somehow believe that we need to earn heaven. We need to earn our status as citizens of heaven, that, that we, it's all up to us. That is completely false. Heaven is a gift given to us by God that cannot be earned because it's free. What I'm not saying very clearly is that I think everyone is going to be in heaven or everyone is going to get there because gifts have to be received. We have to cooperate with the love that God is offering to us because he's not going to force us to love him. But the truth is, is that we don't have to earn something that God is giving to us for free. And that changes the way that we experience our own call to holiness. The paradox is, is that sometimes when people believe that they have to earn heaven, they gotta be good enough just to get there it creates an anxiety in them that causes them to focus on themselves, which ends up making them not respond to his love, which puts them in, in a, at risk of not receiving the gift. So we need to remember that, that the, the kingdom of God, heaven is a gift, that we already are given heaven. Jesus says to his disciples in Luke, he says, fear not little flock, it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Part of the reason why I think some Christians are so joyless is because we're trying to earn that which is free. We don't have to strive and earn it. We just have to respond to love. And if you can feel the difference between what that, what that feels like, rather than trying to earn a place with God, I'm responding from that place that I already have with God. Rather, rather than trying to strive toward heaven, I'm living my life from the reality of heaven that I'm already seated at the right hand of God the Father, as St. Paul says. We already have this as a gift. And it changes the way that we live in this world. My brothers and sisters, you belong more to heaven than you do to the United States of America. Your citizenship in heaven is, has priority than your citizenship of this, in, in this country. And when we live out this identity and we remember where we are going and who we are, 
then perhaps we will make sure that this world becomes even a better place. And the world looking upon what we do in this world perhaps will want to join our ranks in this life and in the life to come.